want to come up? Welcome back to Progressive Rehab and Strength. I am Dr. Rory Alter, and this is Dr. Pepper Slice. I am a doctor of physical therapy, competitive powerlifter, and a competitive barbell coach and general fitness coach. In today's video, I'm tagging on to the last video where I discussed how I started my own business and I am going to discuss the key aspects of how I got into my niche practice of working almost exclusively with barbell training athletes and competitive powerlifters in terms of coaching and rehab programming. So that's what I'm gonna talk about today. The key thing is that I'm also a competitive powerlifter. So how did I get into competitive powerlifting? How did I get into working and training with the barbells? and why is that so important to me. So that's what I'm gonna to discuss today. Well, I wasn't always a powerlifter. I did my first powerlifting competition in November of 2012, and prior to that, I was somewhat competitive triathlete. I would probably say more of a recreational triathlete because I wasn't very competitive at it, but I did do it um, on a collegiate level. I competed at collegiate nationals. Uh, I was probably ranked in the bottom one-third of every collegiate athlete. Prior to triathlon, I was a dancer for most of my life. I wasn't the best dancer. I didn't have the best body for dancing, um, but I was very, very involved in it. When I went to college, I was on a dance team and I met a girl who's in the physical therapy program at Boston University. She spoke very highly of it. It sounded exactly what, like, exactly what I wanted to do. And in grad school for physical therapy, I met my and he introduced me to barbell training, the squat, the bench press, and the deadlift. I was always very interested in weightlifting. I was always in the gym. If I wasn't at dance, I was at the gym. If I wasn't doing squat, bike, or run, I, squat, bike, or run, look at that. If I wasn't doing swim, bike, or run, I was at the gym um, lifting weights. And then I met my husband, and apparently the first thing I asked him was, how do you deadlift 300 pounds? Apparently, at that point, I knew that I wanted to get strong. So, I met my husband. He introduced me to squat, bench, deadlift, overhead press, and the power clean through the starting strength model. That was the model that he used and still does use and we both use. I began doing starting strength linear progression, which was three days per week, adding weight every session to your three sets of five. At some point, he had done a competition and I went with him and it was the longest day of both of our lives. And somehow it intrigued me to still do want to do a competition, so I got into my first competition, November 2012, I weighed in at 161.5 pounds and I totaled 605 pounds. And I said, holy crap, this is so much fun. I did really well, I got first place. I was the only one in my weight class. Um, and I wanna do it again and I wanna be the best. And it was finally something that I was good at in my life. I was pretty good at dance, I was terrible at triathlon, but I was never the best or ex excellent at anything. And I felt like this sport and the barbell movements just made so much sense and I enjoyed it so much that um, I wanted to pursue it further. So I hooked up with a coach and I dropped a weight class, qualified for Raw Unity. I had a blast. What's next? What is the next level above Raw Unity in the United States that's like the best of the best? Well, the Arnold. How do we get to the Arnold? He said, you have to go to nationals. And I say, hey, how do we do that? Like, well, you have to qualify. And I went to nationals in 2014, really not expecting anything at all. My simple goal of going to nationals was to qualify for the Arnold. I didn't realize how high I stood at such a, as such a novice in the powerlifting world, I didn't realize how well I was doing and I actually placed fifth at nationals my first year. So that was super exciting. Um, I felt like a million bucks. I went there not expecting anything other than to just get the qualifying looks for the Arnold and I came home with a medal so I felt amazing. Um, and then I just wanted to keep going. So we went to the American Open, the Arnold, did nationals again. Oh, I missed the Arnold one year because of a registration issue. Anyway, so that's my like competitive history and how I got into powerlifting. Um, basically, I just had a desire to get strong. I asked my future husband if he could teach me how to get strong. The lifts made complete sense. 
in the ability to transfer them into physical therapy because of their functionality. The squat, bench press, overhead press, and deadlift are the most functional movement patterns that we have because they represent every single movement we do on a regular basis. So not only was I an enjoying the sport on this global scale, but this sport made so much sense in terms of transferability to my profession as well. Was fortunate enough to be in a physical therapy practice that actually had a squat rack and barbells. I was able to utilize these highly functional movements in my practice as a physical therapist on a regular basis. So that's how I was able to bring barbells into my practice. What attracts competitive powerlifters to me is not only the fact that I use the barbells to rehabilitate injuries, but that I am also one of the lifters and I incorporate what I do into rehabilitation. So I walk the walk and talk the talk at the same time. And I think that's really important. When you look at a physical therapist, or any physical therapy practice, you actually have to look at the physical therapist who's providing the service and say, does this physical therapist actually do the sport that they're claiming to specialize in it? So what's really my point with telling you the evolution of me as a power lifter and as a physical therapist? Well, the point is, is that if you want to really specialize in something, it's important for you to experience it and engage yourself in what you're trying to do in order to understand all aspects of the sport, then tackle someone's rehabilitation process from every aspect. Being able to experience what it takes to go from complete baseline to a competitive athlete, whether it's on a local level, a national level, or an international level, is very important because you can familiarize yourself with what it takes at every point in the process. Understanding what it feels like to have an injury that prevents you from engaging in your sport. Understanding what it's like to have an injury one week out from a competition and still be able to address mindset, address emotion, address the physical aspects of everything. To become someone who specializes in a specific athlete population, it's important for you to engage in that athletic sport yourself in order to fully outline a rehabilitation program that begins with the acute phase and takes you all the way through reintegration into the sport. Whether you have six months or one week to get that athlete back to where they need to be. So we can look at like thousands of physical therapy practices that say they specialize in running because they have all this amazing equipment that like analyzes your running. You can jump on a treadmill and there's three different cameras from three different angles and then the computer that looks at everything and like generates all this information for you. But unless you are actually engaged in that sport and can integrate that information into a rehabilitation plan and outline that for the client and execute it for the client. And unless you can understand what it feels like to go through all of that yourself, then you're just a regular physical therapist. So if you wanna be a specialized physical therapist, I recommend that you find what you're very good at, engage yourself full throttle in your sport, go through a couple of competitions, even if you are not competitive, Stay engaged in your sport, even as a coach. If you're just a coach behind a computer and you don't do competitions or you haven't done a competition in three years and you haven't lifted in three years, then what does that mean? It means you don't understand right now what the client is going through. At some point along the way, you'll get injured too because injuries are a part of life. Physical therapists would not exist. Not Orthopedic surgeons wouldn't exist if there were no injuries, right? So injury kind of just comes along with existing. So if you engage in your sport and you are engaged in it long enough, then you'll experience some type of injury and you'll go through the rehabilitation process. And yes, I have been injured and that's because I've been doing this a long time. But if I wasn't doing powerlifting, I would probably have hurt myself and I can tell you, I definitely did hurt myself doing triathlons and I also definitely hurt myself as a dancer. So to recap all of that, you wanna walk the walk and talk the talk at the same time. Without walking the walk, Talking the talk is literally just talking. B 
becoming specialized in what you do is going to be heightened if you are active in your sport that you are specializing in as well. But you need to go through that competitive experience to work with competitive athletes. If I was choosing a coach or a physical therapist, I would want to work with someone who understands exactly what I'm going through as the athlete and as a person and as a 